where does that awareness happen or when does it happen? Meaning if with addiction and recovery, you usually hit rock bottom. Like there's usually like this defining moment, if you will, where you're like, okay, this is it. I can't victimhood. I would think it's, it's a little harder to recognize that moment. So I guess a, have you ever been in that situation where you, you had that moment of like, okay, I got to, I got to start already. Um, yeah, so let's talk about what addiction is and what it isn't, right? What what addiction is, is just my expression and my manifestation and the manifestation of my dysfunction, right? But my dysfunction is these kind of things, like victimhood. My expression of it was through porn addiction and sex addiction and stuff like that, in my case. Many others, but that that's, you know, what what we've spoken about a lot. Someone else may express that through an eating disorder, may express it through something else, right? They're just through codependency, through anxiety, through a number of other stuff, maybe their expression of their dysfunction. But I think victimhood is, that's kind of uniform. What addiction does, right, when it gets to a certain point, the beauty of it is now it's got your attention. Like, mm. You know, you've woken up on the side of the street again, <laughs> Right. <laughs> drunk you don't remember the last six hours you have a number of commitments that you haven't been able to, ke- to, to keep You're like wow I gotta pay attention to this and then someone's okay how do I stop drinking and they walk in as if the enemy is alcohol and then hopefully they get to the right person and it says alcohol is not your problem alcohol is your solution to your problem so what's your problem and then they start digging in you have all these feelings that you don't know how to manage and how do you anesthetize them how do you numb them is through Alcohol. So we're not going to fight alcohol. We're going to he- heal your problem, and alcohol will solve itself. You're not going to need to go there anymore because you're using it as a numbing agent. You've taken one too many Tylenols, right? Mm-hmm. Called Jack Daniel. That's what you did. So now we're. I'm not going to tell you to stop Tylenol. I'm not going to tell you to stop Jack Daniel. I'm just going to deal with the the pain. If you're not feeling the pain, you're not going to want to go there. And as you start looking at some of those things, one of them that's has been uniform every single talk about an addiction like the triggers there are some triggers one is like entitlement is a big one boredom is another one and and entitlement and victimhood are often very closely related it's oh this happened to me so i deserve that and oftentimes that can be someone acting out in their addiction it's like yeah i had a really rough day my boss yelled at me embarrassed me in front of everyone right so therefore i am entitled to a drink, or something else happened, you know, I got robbed, someone took a bunch of money from me, I feel terrible for myself, and therefore, I'm drinking, right, so eventually, when we're surrounding ourselves with people who know how to be honest with us, then they'll tell us that, and that was my experience, and someone's like, oh, you're just in victimhood right now, and I get it, something happened, like, it's, we're understanding, but you're there, you'll stay there for as long as you need to, and when you're ready to get out, you let that go, and you have your next sober day. But until then, you'll just kind of wallow in it. So I don't, it doesn't start. I don't. I don't think it starts in that way. People aren't going to therapy for victimhood or recovery for victimhood. Eventually, when you start this process, I think one of the things we'll bump into is victimhood, and then some may trip over it for three days, and some may trip over it for thirty years. We all have the same problems, just in different. Um, different magnitudes.